Well, hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to my shop. So today's video project is going to be, I'm going to make a surface plate stand for my new to me surface plate that I acquired uh, a little while ago. I think I showed a sneak peek in one of my, uh, was it mail calls maybe? So uh, let's get started. We're in my shop office. This is where this thing is going to live. So this was uh, gifted to me by a viewer named Dan. I appreciate it, Dan. Thank you very much. It is a two foot by three foot, and I believe it's uh, three inches thick. Maybe wrong, that may be four. I have to measure it, I can't remember. But it's a precision granite. So build a stand, get it up in the air, and we'll get this thing usable. Here's the stock that I uh, picked up. We're gonna make it out of two by two, three sixteenths thick angle. And that'll be the main frame. I've got some of that uh, one and a quarter by one and a quarter left over, so we can use that for supports. And I also picked up a bunch of uh, machine feet from McMaster Car for feet for the bottom of the stand and then we need three feet, three feet for the uh, airy points so I got seven feet total so let me get this stuff uh, cut up and then we can start welding up and get this frame going Somebody's waiting. <laughs> what you got, buddy? Say hey to everybody. Finally got all the stock cut. That took a while. It took so long, I think Mr. Chaos has pooped. We've been throwing his toy all day. Got you over here at the mill. So I cut these two by two quarter inch thick pieces. They're going to be the I don't know, bottom feet, so to speak, I guess, of the stand itself. Here are the nice feet, if you guys can see it. Let me hold it back over here. Picked up from McMaster Car, 5 8 fine thread, two and a half inch pad. So, nice feet. Now, I mean, all we, if we wanted just to you know, knock it out, we could just weld a nut on it, and then, you know, this would come up from the back side, which would work, but we can do better, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a one and an eighth inch hole out with these annular cutters and then we're going to make some uh, nice standoffs and thread them put them in here and weld them up so they look good so be stronger too so want to do it right knock out the other three off camera all knocked out I will say you know a lot, a lot of times people forget about annular cutters because I mean the conventional way would what step drill this about three times to take it out to one and an eighth and don't know how accurate that hole would be after the fact but so you know I do about three operations and you just put an annual cutter in Boom, go right through it, one shot, and your hole is usually pretty much on the money. So yeah, use annular cutters when you can, especially on big holes. 
think I'm going to go ahead and weld up the top of the stand to start off with. You're looking at the bottom of it. The table is actually where the granite would be sitting. Got it all squared, so let's get her welded up. I think what I'm going to do next, I'm going to weld on the mounting tabs for the feet to the legs. So, got it all ground and cleaned. Let's buzz it on. Got them all welded up. So, what I think I want to do now is make the inserts that go in here, the threaded inserts that the feet are going to go into. Got some 1045 that'll work out just perfect. I think it's, uh, hang on, sorry about the shakiness, trying to do this about one-handed. So, looks like uh, about one and three-quarter inch diameter. You can see my rough sketch here, this is what we're going to do just something simple so whatever this finishes out to basically I'm just gonna take a skim pass once it cleans up because this dimension here doesn't matter this one is about the only one that's critical so it'll slide in there since we cut one and one eighth inch holes which is 1.125 I'm just gonna turn down this diameter a couple thou less so they'll slide in and then we gotta drill a hole and tap it for 5818 for these babies right here. So let's go uh, knock the dust off of the Inco lathe and knock the dust off of me since I haven't. <laughs> Shoot, I haven't played with a lathe since what, December? Man, long time. Well, I just discovered that the cross slide readout is not working right, so. I guess that's going to be a casualty of the fire. We're going to have to do it old school. I've got a DTI set up over here. So now I can get the accurate feed. Now we'll just go ahead and clean up this outside. Reset my zero with the dial now. Fifteen thou skim pass, see if that cleans up. Well, that cleaned up nicely. So now I gotta go in half an inch and we gotta take her down to um just under a one eighth of an inch so I'm probably gonna take it just about a couple thou so it'll make sure it'll slide in because those annual cutters cut really accurate so those holes are 1.125 so just a couple thou so it'll be a nice slip fit and we'll weld them in so let's start uh, chewing some material off should be there finally took a while to chew that down I think after I make this one I'm just gonna take it over to the monarch that way I can take big bites and whittle this thing down quicker I was just gonna use it over here because we had the DRO make it a little bit faster but since the DRO is not working properly it's kind of a mute point you know so. see there we go yep sweet let's break a couple edges 
and drill a hole and tab it. Now the tap drill size for a 5818 is 37 64 So that's the, what this drill bit is here, take it to the final dimension. Set up the tap. This is my only 5 8 18 tap that I got. It is a green field, so it's quality. So fingers crossed we get through all seven and don't have it break on me. So I'm just why well, I'm gonna do it by hand. We'll uh, give it a fighting chance with some of this hangster furs. Chuck here. Well, feels pretty good. I don't know the history of this tap, where I got it, tell you the truth, so. But it seems to be fairly sharp, cutting pretty well in this 1045. So. All right, I'll bring you back when I reach the bottom of the hole. Oh, that cut like butter, so it must be super sharp. Which means we should be able to get through the other six, no problem. So that's good. Now another reason to take this project over the Monarch is this lathe is not very rigid, it just doesn't like parting. I can get away with it. Aluminum, brass, and small diameter steel, but seeing this is one and three quarters of an inch, it's not going to do it. It's going to be uh, arguing the whole way. So I'm just going to go in and uh, mark it, and then I can take it over to the bandsaw and just whoosh, and be done with it. So that's the plan. See what I mean? This is 180 RPM. My next choice is 60. I mean, we have a little bit of a stick out, but it is pretty rigid. Look how thick this thing is. bandsaw it. All set up over here at the Monarch. Ain't nothing wrong with the Enco if we're making one part, but since we gotta make seven of these rascals, it's gonna take forever, so I can plow some material off of this machine since it's nice and rigid and got a lot more horsepower, so uh, let's do this thing. I already cleaned up the face. Got the uh, half inch depth set over here. Now let me get my zero, which is there. And take some material off. What do you say? I'm a hand feeder since I only got half an inch. So it'd come up quick if I had power fed it.
just finished threading the hole. I didn't bother showing it because you saw me thread the last one. Let's get this thing uh, parted off to size. Got a little bit of stick out, but we don't have to go too far, so we'll see. Did slow the lathe down a little bit. If I gotta pull the blade back in, I will. See if we get any flex or not. Well, that took a while, but I got them all done. Hopefully you can see them fairly well in the sunlight. I don't know if they're getting blown out. If this is better or not. So, I think it's going to be much better with this than that. So, now it's time to you know, drop them in. Got a nice snug fit. And I'll weld it in the bottom, and we'll put the feet in. I think that looks a lot better than just going this, uh, you know, weld a nut on it route. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, Mr. Chaos got a new toy today. He's all excited. You ready, buddy? Pew. Bring it here. There you go, good boy. Let me have it, I'll throw it. <laughs> He's like, I ain't giving it to you. I got me a new toy. What are you talking about? Huh? What you got? There it is, all welded up. Got to uh, clean a few welds, break a couple edges, and then get it cleaned and get some paint on it. But I think it came out pretty well. I did make one boo-boo. I didn't make these corners tall enough because once uh, we put the feet in the inserts, they're gonna be taller then the corner so I, I should have probably made them two inches instead of one inch so anyways I don't think the stone is gonna slide off but just one boo-boo on my calculations so I went to Standridge Granite's website to locate the supports also referred to as the airy points and they recommended coming in from a fifth to a quarter coming in here and then coming in here and doing the same thing there and of course obviously you're going to you know take half of the width of your stone there so that's how i got these located boy i wish i was 24 years old again it wouldn't be a problem grabbing this stone that weighs 350 pounds and just tossing it up there i was a beast in my younger days but now i'm 58 years old and got two artificial shoulders so um finagling this thing up on the stand is uh, a no-go today i'll have to wait to uh, get a buddy to give me a hand to get this thing up there so i do have it leveled with just a regular carpenter's level i imagine putting it on carpet is not ideal 
you know you'd rather have this on a hardwood or a concrete floor but you know I want to keep it in the office where I can kind of keep it a little more clean and out of the elements so I'll have to check it over time as the uh, carpet pile compresses you know I went ahead and put a shelf in the bottom so I can store measuring equipment and whatnot and cleaning fluid and knickknacks but uh, there she is in all her glory once I uh, get it up there I'll get a couple snapshots and you know add it in the next video or something so Well, I figured I'd film the outro of this video under my new roof. <laughs> so the weather has been uh, perfect this week. Fall is here. It's been like 70 degrees during the day and 50 degrees at night. So it's been really nice working out here in the shop. The leaves are starting to turn. They're already starting to drop. So fortunately that means old, uh, you know, Father Winter is right around the corner. But I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a fun project. It's one of those that's been on the list. Glad to check it off. It will come in handy. So, Mr. Chaos is anxious. I haven't been playing with him. I've been busy doing the build. <laughs> but uh, anyways, just wanna say thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate all the new subscribers. So it should be more machining content coming up. Got a lot of stuff to do. So until the next video, we'll see you later, guys. Take care. Bye.